Our Mass this morning, this is the uh, Tuesday morning Mass in West Brooklyn at St. Mary the Assumption Church, uh, done at our, our alternate uh, altar uh, because of the cold weather. We'll be praying this Mass uh, for the deceased intentions of the repose of the soul of Rita Hefner, also Pauline uh, Gilhouse and Geraldine Goff. And the living intention of this Mass will be for uh, John and Margie Judd. And we'll pray, since we're in our Novena of Masses uh, for life, we'll pray our Gospel of Life prayer before Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. We pray together. O Mary, bright dawn of the new world, Mother of the living, to you do we entrust the cause of life. Look down, O Mother, upon the vast numbers of babies, not allowed to be born, of the poor whose lives are made difficult, of men and women who are victims of brutal violence, of the elderly and the sick, killed by indifference or out of misguided mercy. Grant that all who believe in your Son may proclaim the gospel of life with honesty and love to the people of our time. Obtain for them the grace to accept that gospel as a gift ever new, the joy of celebrating it with gratitude throughout their lives, and the courage to bear witness to it resolutely in order to build together with all people of goodwill, the civilization of truth and love, to the praise and glory of God, the creator and lover of life. Amen. And the Lord be with you, with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go with joy to celebrate this Mass. Thanks be to God. St. Mary the Assumption, pray for us. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. We mark ourselves with the sign of God's great love for us, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you, and with your spirit. Let's read this Mass, this cold morning here in January, with the polar vortex going on. We call to mind the times that we have been distressed, that other family members and fellow uh, members of our church community have disowned their Catholic faith. We pray that our tears of weeping would be wiped away by our Lord in this Eucharist, that we would have the blessings of this spiritual communion that we make for so many others. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve for Saul, whom I have rejected as king of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. But Samuel replied, How can I go? Saul will hear of it and kill me. To this the Lord answered, Take a heifer along and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I myself will tell you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I point out to you. Samuel did as the Lord had commanded him. And when he entered Bethlehem, the elders of the city came trembling to meet him and inquired, Is your visit peaceful, O seer? He replied, Yes, 
I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. So cleanse yourselves and join me today for the banquet. Also, he had also Jesse and his sons cleanse themselves and invite them to the sacrifice. As they came, he looked at Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because he sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. And then Jesse called Aminadab and presented him before Samuel, who said, The Lord has not chosen him. Next Jesse presented Shammam, but Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. And then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? And Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. And Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youthful, handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is he. And then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. When Samuel took his leave, he went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have found David, my servant. I have found David, my servant. Once you spoke in a vision to your faithful ones, you said, On a champion I have placed a crown over the people I have set a youth. I have found David, my servant. I have found David, my servant, who with my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him and that my arm may make him strong. I have found David, my servant. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. And I will make him the firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. I have found David, my servant. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of the grain. At this, the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God when Abinathar was high priest and ate the bread of offering that only the priests could lawfully eat and shared it with his companions. And then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And that is why the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Samuel took his leave, he went to Ramah. Samuel was among the greatest prophets in Israel. Remember in our readings from last week, the scripture said, The Lord was with Samuel, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. And yet Samuel's own sons would not listen to their dad or follow the Lord's ways, just as the prophet Eli's sons wouldn't be faithful to God. As we shall see, there's always weeping 
when it becomes apparent that the next generation will live without honoring God, without worshiping God, without adoring God. This always causes us to weep. But remember also, Samuel didn't originally want to anoint a king for the Israelites. The prophet Samuel saw their reliance on a human ruler as a rejection of God, and it was. And yet the prophet Samuel fell in love with King Saul because Samuel saw that God would work through a king to bring his love to the Israelites as long as the king obeyed the Almighty. We learn that Samuel is grieving for Saul even after God has rejected King Saul. You see, Samuel is upset that the Israelites will be without God. God says, buck up, Samuel. Go and anoint a new king, a king that I, God, will joyfully work through that I might bless the Israelites again. And of course, Samuel goes and anoints King David who will lead God's people to victory, whom God will look upon as his own son. But notice, after Samuel anoints Jesse's youngest son, where does Samuel go? He goes to Ramah. Now, yes, Ramah was Samuel's birthplace. It was his hometown. It was the place where the prophet would eventually die. But the prophet Samuel goes to Ramah to weep, to cry, to mourn. Remember, Ramah is the place by Jewish tradition that Rachel weeps for her children because they are in exile, because they are gone, because they refuse to follow God. You see, there's always weeping when the next generation will not follow God. Our Lord Jesus, he wept over the city of Jerusalem. Jesus wept because his brothers and sisters, you and I, would not be faithful to his Father. What do we do when someone cries? We celebrate the Mass for them so that God can wipe away every tear from our eyes and we can behold God's beauty. Let's you and I, let's you and I celebrate this Mass on this cold morning and allow the Holy Spirit to dry our eyes, just like the Holy Spirit dried up the Red Sea. May we look upon God's beauty in this Eucharist and make a spiritual communion for all who have fallen away from the practice of their Catholic faith. We call to God with all of our prayers and petitions. Though we often come to the Mass weeping, as the prophet Samuel did, we pray God will console us with the glimpse of his Son in this Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We make a spiritual communion for all those unable to celebrate this Mass because of the cold. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our beloved dead, that the Lord would raise their mortal bodies to glory, just as he does the Savior's body in this holy Mass. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May Rita Hefner's soul, Pauline Gilhouse's soul, and Geraldine Golf's soul, through the mercy of God, Rest in peace. Amen. And we pray Hail Mary prayer that the Blessed Mother Mary, St. Rachel, and St. Samuel will comfort us and give us hope in the power of Jesus Christ to gather all our beloved under the protection of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray our novena prayer for the gospel of life again. Remember, this is for the protection of our young people who will be demonstrating on a cold day in the nation's capital this coming Friday. 
O Mary, bright dawn of the new world, mother of the living, to you do we entrust the cause of life. Look down, O mother, upon the vast numbers of babies not allowed to be born, the poor whose lives are made difficult, of men and women who are victims of brutal violence, of the elderly and the sick, killed by indifference or out of misguided mercy. Grant that all who believe in your Son may proclaim the gospel of life with honesty and love to the people of our time. Obtain for them the grace to accept that gospel as a gift ever new, the joy of celebrating it with gratitude throughout their lives, and the courage to bear witness to it resolutely in order to build, together with all people of goodwill, the civilization of truth and love, to the praise and glory of God, the creator and lover of life. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and to answer all of these prayers, to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. <coughs> Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, at whose command... We celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving the thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving <clears throat> this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Samuel and Saint Rachel, and with Saint Peter and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, especially Rita Hefner, Pauline Gilhaus, and Geraldine Golf, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when, from the earth, he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace right in front of Our Lady, St. Mary the Assumption.
Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. Now we'll make our spiritual communion prayer so that all of you uh, watching this Mass can uh, receive the grace of this Eucharist, as well as uh, make a spiritual communion for all of your loved ones. We make the spiritual communion prayer especially for Rita Hepner, Pauline Gilhouse, Geraldine Golf, the jo uh, young people attending the Pro-Life March this Friday, and for our spiritual twelve. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since other people dear to me cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come, at least spiritually, into their hearts. As though you are already in our hearts, help us to embrace you and unite ourselves wholly to you. Permit not that we should ever be separated from you. Amen. Now we'll pray a prayer that gratitude will be front and center in our hearts. My Jesus, I love and adore you. You have come to me. I am one with you. I want you to remain with me forever in this life and in the next. Thank you for allowing me to share your divine life. And may I become more like you through this sacred food. Let me never take you for granted, but always pray for those whose lives are dark with sin and ignorance and selfishness. And let me remember in the words of St. Paul, that there but for the grace of God go I. Each day I can become more like you, O Lord. Each day I can pray for those who have never heard of your presence in the Eucharist or who have heard it and rejected it. Amen. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those that you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and in heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, the Mass tomorrow, that would be normally at 8 o'clock in Sublet on Wednesday, our Novena to Our Lady. Uh, we'll pray that Mass here at our Auxiliary Chapel as well uh, because of the cold. So you're welcome to uh, watch that uh, video, the YouTube video that we'll put on the website of that Mass tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday as well. Hopefully uh, we'll be back to our normal schedule in our regular scheduled churches on Thursday. We'll play it by ear to see how bad the weather is on Thursday morning. The Lord be with you, with your spirit, and the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.